Hey guys, Westy here. How you going? Hey, listen, I'm gonna do a bit of a tweaking uh, session on 3GX. Um, I haven't found a lot of it on the net at all, and I kind of got frustrated with my heli not performing as I thought it should um, on my T-Rex 600. So if you double click on your 3GX, I'm, I'm using version 3.1. And scroll across to your flight parameters. Now this is a bit different to the actual setting in the in the actual gyro itself. Um, there's been a few few changes from version 3.0, uh, sorry 2.1 to 3.0 and 3.1. Um, basically, you used to do you used to be able to do a lot of settings in 2.1. Um, but now with 3.0 and 3.1, you basically see your cyclic control up to 8 degrees, and then you can go into your flight parameters and change those settings. You can do that on the actual device on the helicopter without plugging into the computer, which is great. Um, so click on flight mode parameters, and we're going to plug in our 3GX on the helicopter. And it's going to connect up in a minute. And it's telling me um, here that the version that it's found on the software is 3.1. Okay, now I'm going to just check. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll set the default so that you can see what originally the settings were. Um, and if you want an ex explanation of what each of these items does, now this particular flight mode parameter 1 screen, you can't do anything on the actual device out in the field. Uh, this, these options are not available, they're only available on the software. So what I suggest is you, um, if you, if you have a look here, it tells you what each option does. Um, so basically the higher the setting on this flight control, condition control, um, the more smoother the control feel and a smooth transition between them. So basically it gives you the less aggression um, and more smoothness. Um, I've left that at 50. I'm actually going to try in another session to actually increase this temp. I'll take a laptop with me to the flying field and I'll increase 10% at a time until 100% and really see how much control it's got over the helicopter and how much you have to actually move your cyclic to, to get it to actually move. So that'll be interesting. But in this one, I've, I've basically got... Um, so you've got that there. You've got the uh, pre-compensation for the collective pitch elevator. Um, basically what you do with this here is when you test flying if you um, um, if you raise the helicopter and the, and the um, tail drops down as you as you pull collective and it goes up and the actual tail drops down then you need to adjust this to um, increase you need to increase this to prevent that tail from dropping down and if, vice versa if you drop it down and the tail rises then you need to decrease the setting okay so that's a little tweak that you might need to um, check to see what's going on there um, then you've got your cyclic ring setting and um, basically this is your, um, to avoid binding in your swash so you basically move your cyclic around and if it's not if it's binding you can it, you put it at mid stick of course and about hovering level so 50 and 50 out on a on a TX if you're using a spectrum and um, basically you want to adjust this setting here so that um, you don't get any binding if you are getting any binding on your swash um, I'm not getting any binding so I've left it as, as uh, standard I've actually put it right at 100 and it hasn't bound and I've put it at zero it's come, come a lot less but Anyway, so I've left it at the standard there. Now, um, this one here is your cyclic pitch exponential setting. Now, if you're using Expo on your TX, you want to disable this and take it back to zero. But to get that to stick, you have to actually write this to the TX. Okay, I'm not going to actually do that right now because I've got settings on my TI uh, on my TX. But you need to write that to get them to stick on the controller itself. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so that's if you're using cyclic. So um, there's also a switch here for um, setting up simulated flybar parameters. I'll, I'll, 
defaults disabled. I've not found what that does, nor am I really interested in setting it up to act like a fly bar. So um, I'll move on from that one. The, this set here, um, you can actually adjust by, by once your uh, heli's initialized, you can pull left or right rudder and press and hold the uh, set button for a couple of seconds, and this gives you all these options here. Now, um, I these by default these bottom four settings are disabled. Now I'll go through each one so you can see what it does. The flip rate adjustment basically um, is your elevator roll rate, so it's basically how fast your roll will will happen, uh, or how aggressive you want it to happen. So the higher the number, the more aggressive the maneuver will be, and the lower the number, the less aggressive it will be. Um, your aileron is the same. Aileron roll rate adjustment is the same for aileron rolls, so that will adjust vice versa. Um, your elevator travel limit. Now, um, what that does is basically when you set up on your DR mode, you set up your you set up your um, helicopter to go to eight degrees. So now you can add that in this section here with the elevator travel limit and the aileron travel level limit um, you can increase those to match so that you can have your if you're running 13 degrees positive negative or 11 degrees positive negative on your pitch range you can set this to match if you wish to do that uh, and through here so you don't have to use your swash menus to do that anymore so you basically limit your swash at 8 degrees and then it will adjust these so the default 70 percent on each one of these um, your collective pitch dampening. Now I have adjusted these and I'm going to show you what I've set them to in a minute but I'm just going to explain what they are. Um, basically the collective pitch dampening as it says here um, dampens the ascend descend maneuvers. So the higher the value the smoother the stopping action during an ascend so during a rise or fall. Um, lower value translate to a more direct feel. Recommended setting suitable dampening to prevent um, oscillation effects so during sudden stops. So what you can do is you can raise this up at 10% at a time until you start getting uh, oscillations in the heli like you'll see tail bobbing or um, side to side aileron bobbing and you can actually button that off but you um, so I'm going to show you what my settings are in a minute of what I've tweaked mine to to get it reasonably stable. Um, the cyclic pitch dampening is exactly the same in the cyclic. So um, um, let's see if it comes up here. Okay, so the same thing, smoother flight maneuvers. So this will give you the, on the cyclic, so the, the, this one up here is a click to control, left stick if you're using mode 2, and um, this one's the cyclic controls for um, oscillations uh, basically it gives you smooth flight maneuvers. so if you find it's really jerky on your, uh, when you're trying to get it stable uh, which I did <laughs> um, I, um, I, I moved this I adjusted these settings here to um, get it to work and I'll show you what I'm, as again I'll show you what they'll work in a minute um, collective pitch acceleration okay this um, can tr can controls your pitch control speed the proper setting of this parameter will result in a more agile, so a faster rise and fall um, with an increased feel of power. So it'll go, you know, how you see the, the the bobbing up of the helicopters where it rises fast and up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, this actually does this. It actually speeds the speed that it goes from positive to negative pitch. Um, so if you, but but over anything over fifty percent, you will um, th this. Uh, the writing here doesn't actually explain it too well because it's um, it's in kind of Chinglish a bit, but it says like bed may not sustain. But it says BEC. That actually means BEC may not sustain the power burst. So you need to make sure that you use um, a direct power source. So um, or usually that means using a, um, a separate BEC battery, um, so you don't get drain on your motor and drain in the bat same battery is draining on your BEC at the same time because it may cause a a brownout or, or or an issue. So run a I, I run my um, 
tally with a separate VC battery, and that pre prevents that issue. Um, and then cyclic pitch acceleration. Uh, basically, this this will give you a smoother cyclic pitch control, but it may also create a slight de accelerator. So basically, it will cause a bit of lift during holder. So it's not recommended for beginners. Um, generally, if you want to use it, though, you can set it between 30 and 50 percent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you quickly. I'll just read off my. Um, I'll take a quick read, which will, if you click the read button, it actually will show up. What my 3GX Pro uh, controller on my heli is actually showing and how I've got it set up. So I'll just click that quickly. And as you can see, these four settings I've changed. So I've got my um, collective pitch dampening set for 40, my cyclic pitch at 40, my collective pitch at 40, and my cyclic pitch ac uh, acceleration, sorry, and my cyclic pitch acceleration at 30. Um, you can play around with it, but that might be a good place to start and give you an idea of what um, like you might want to like obviously the pitch dampening um, that's how you're gonna get some real fast and um, smooth stops and um, the, obviously your pitch acceleration will do your fast um, speed and power with between positive and negative pitch so you're gonna get that snap up and down okay um, so yeah all of these are and I, I'll just see if I've got um, I've got my obviously I've got my uh, pitch expo cyclic pitch expo to zero because I'm using expo in my heli in my TX and my rudder parameters I've got that set to standard um, now this rudder acceleration adjustment uh, it'll increase the startup speed and response of, of, of for larger helis is, is automatically dis disabled for um, small helis. And I'll just see if I've got that set correctly. Uh, yep, I've got my heli set for a large, but it's automatically disabled it anyway. So you can, if you find that your heli is not responding too good on the tail um, at startup. But it's getting a lot of your you can play around with that setting there. I haven't had to, it's been mine's been pretty good. Um, so you've got your rudder lock and gain adjustment. Basically, um, if you're getting forward or backward flights and it's actually um, resulting in a um, you know, it's skewing, it's not it's crabbing, it's not actually flying true, then you can change this uh, gain lock and gain adjustment up and down to. Um, you know, with an odd, odd play with 10%, then go to 20, and then the other way, and see what see what effect happens. Um, that's how you can correct that um, acceleration adjustment, which I just went into. It's uh, for for large helicopters, really small helis. You have it to zero. Collective pitch torque comp pre compensa compensation. It says here, but it's actually compensation. Um, basically, collect. This is a Kind of like the old days when they used to do mixing with your um, rate gyros. Um, so you collect a pitch to rudder pro proactive compensation. This parameter increases the, uh, is is increased if you nose yours to the left on when you raise your collective and punch up. If it yours to the left, you need to increase this setting. If it yours to the right. You decrease the setting. Okay, so what it does is it keeps your tries to keep your heli true. Um, I haven't adjusted that yet, but I'm going to actually adjust it a little bit uh, one of these days when I'll and I'll and I'll do a separate uh, rundown on how that all went. And then you've got your anti-torque compensation. What this is for for your speed of to compensate for um, your uh, rotor rotation, and this will try and give you a symmetrical feel for clockwise and anti-clockwise um, pyros when you when you're spinning your spinning your heli you know, with the with your rudder control left and right so it'll actually try and get them both exactly the same. Okay, so that's I've got that set extended. So um, so yeah so hopefully at, and of and if you have a look at my setting displays the two pots on your on top of your can uh, RX for your 3GX. That, this setting here is for the aileron gain. This setting here is for your elevator gain. Okay. 
Now I've set mine at 90. I did used to set it at 105, but I found that it um, gave a little bit too much tail wag. So you, you know, I'm trying 90 at the moment, and then I might tweak it up. But it doesn't take much at all to tweak it up to 100. It's really, really small amount. So you need to do that on the software here to do that. Okay. So anyway, I hope that helps you out and um, or gives you a couple of ideas to play with. If anybody's got any better suggestions or um, or tweaks that they found really work for small or large helis, then definitely, definitely um, pop us a line down here and we'll, we'll, yeah, I'll have a crack at it and I'll test it out. Okay, thanks guys, and um, this is Westy over now.